I feel like Steadfast, he'll kind of stick to what he did last game as well. He, well, one, you won with that strategy. It's best of three. You're up one. You can afford to lose the game if you want. But plus, also, Steadfast, that's a very similar style to what I've seen with, from him from, like, the past two years. It, just go for the very quick bases and get a lot of tech um, all around the seven minute mark. But we're going to be getting into this game. Spawning on top of our blue Zerg down in the bottom right of Coda. It is gear in the rears, steadfast. And in the upper left corner, we've got Zero playing your red Terran. And both players starting off with their economy as best as they can. The Terran player just Slightly behind on the spending, but not a big deal. All things considered, though, this is going to be your typical, like, we're going to be uh, seeing this for the next little while, Overlord being built out by the Zerg player, and the Supply Depot being uh, built up by the SAV at the beginning of the ramp up into the main base. Although, this Overlord's getting pretty aggressive with its scouting right out of the gate. It's moving across the entire map. Is that particularly safe, or do you think that it's going to end up being just picked off randomly? It's probably fine, especially since most Terrans, they go for the marine, uh, for the Reaper opener, I should say. And even if they do have a Marine, you know, you need to be able to see what your opponent's going to be doing eventually anyways. So just sending the Overlord across, you know, it's a very normal thing to do. And the Barrack being uh, built up on the edge of this ramp as well, so going straight into the typical Terran opening as far as I understand it. The Zerg just happy to start mining away. They're going straight for minerals as fast as possible. They've built into their second hatchery already. Uh, very much what we saw last game out of Steadfast from what I remember. SEV casually taking its SEV stroll like we see a lot of SEVs doing. It's moving its way across the map to see uh, what exactly the Terran player is going to be dealing with. Right now... I'm excited to see what ends up happening. The extractor being built a little bit earlier than usual. Uh, last time the extractor didn't come out for a while, and this time Steadfast going for that uh, for a much earlier extractor than before. Yeah. What do you think that means? I'm feeling that we're going to be seeing some banelings and a much quicker metabolic boost this time around from Steadfast. Definitely going to be going for a bit more of the aggressive kind of play. Or another possibility is that he'll be going up into the Roach Horn and going with that. As, you know, having a big open space, it does allow you to get surrounds, but also it allows you to get some nice, good Roach Concaves as well. And, you know, surprisingly, this time around, Zero did not opt to go for his refineries. And this is a very odd thing to see in Heart of the Swarm, because most of the time you get the Terran going for the refinery very quickly, um, getting up their reapers or getting up the factory. It looks like actually we're going to be getting the command center after the barracks and then another barracks. A very marine heavy comp to start things off. And still no gas coming out of the Terran player either so we're definitely not seeing the reaper rush this time. Uh, the overlord in the upper right corner being a little bit of, being assaulted a little bit but it got away just fine so it's going to sit there and continue to scout for the time being. Steadfast currently sitting on exactly what he had even a couple of minutes ago. Like, he hasn't really advanced past that. He's just been building up his economy as much as possible. He's now got a queen available on his main base and on his expansion. So the larvae are going to be very real in the next couple of seconds. And past that, there's a spawning pool, and it's researching Zergling stuff. So it seems like Zergling's going to be another major force of this, and Banelings uh, going to be a part of this force, as you mentioned before. So good call. That's... Uh, do you think that's going to work, though, against, like, the number of Marines that Zero is going to be putting out? I think it will only because it's the large number of Marines. If there was a Marauder, if there was even a Reaper, if there was a Factory, Widow Mines were possible, Hellions were possible, but right now, we only have a Bunker and a handful of Marines. But Steadfast, he's thrown down 20 Zerglings in the production tab. He's got... 20 right now, 10 or 15 more on the way. Going to bring him up to 35. And Banelings, with such a weak or non existent wall, those Banelings will be able to deal so much damage. But Zero, if he can kite for a very long time, he might be able to do this. But the Zerglings are already coming in. They're doing a ton of damage to that bunker, too. They're going to end up taking it down, and maybe one of the Marines. 
before backing out. They ended up taking a pretty severe cost in numbers as well. But uh, they're going to go right back in there. They're going to stall for a second while the Banelings come in and deal some significant damage to the buildings that are being constructed. The Zerglings continue to pour forward as they take out the last of the Marines that are defending this area. They're now going to start doing their best to transform into Banelings. And whatever Zerglings are not transforming are going around and harassing the workers. Workplace harassment is real here, folks, and it's taking a serious toll on the Terran player as they do a major number on what's left of the forces here for the Terran player. They're going to start doing some damage over here. The Bailey's going to come in, destroy the two supply depots, and the Marines that were being built back in the main get taken out almost instantaneously. The SCVs being called to battle, they're going to get picked apart by the far more ferocious Zerglings. And the Zerglings are doing an excellent job over seemingly an unending tide of these little buggers. Just overwhelming what defenses Zero has here. The bunker about to go down with the Soul Marine being taken out. This other bunker completely empty going to be taken out as well. There's a couple Marines that have been built. They're going to do their best to hop into the bunker first before dying. And they're going to do some damage. But again, the Zerglings just not stopping. They're coming in. And that's, that's going to be the GG. Zero calling it. That was completely unlike what I think he was anticipating. What a play out of Steadfast. What do yep. you think was going through Zero's head there? I have to say that, again, like you said, he was completely caught off guard. He had really no idea of what was going to be coming at his way. And Steadfast, he did a very good job. He did a very economic, a very greedy build first game, and then game two, nope, completely switched from that went into the quick Zergling and Banelinger and harassment, and I'd have to say it was a bit of a build order loss for Zero because of the fact that, you know, he did not go for the Reaper, he had no gas, he had no real ability to deal with the Banelings coming in, but it's how the cookie crumbled, unfortunately. But, of course, well played to the belt of Absolutely, no. Zero did a very good job. Even, even even in that first game, when he saw that Steadfast was playing the long game, Zero decided to do his best to try to keep up in that respect. But Steadfast did a very methodical, slow-moving, creeping approach that it just took the game eventually. And in this case, throwing the, it was Steadfast that threw the curveball. Instead of doing what you expected him to do for the past two years, he decided, you know what? Zero is expecting me to do that. Let's just go full aggression. That was really cool to see that, and just an unending tide of Zerglings later, he's going to take this best of three, two to nothing. That was really cool to see. So, what else do we have in line for us? Well, coming up next, we're going to be actually going into our winner's finals. Of course, we had Steadfast here, just went two over over zero, but facing him in the winner's finals is our American player, the one lone American who really enjoys poutine. Uh, it's EJK. And again, you know, as an American, you definitely have a much higher travel expense coming up here than our Canadian players. So getting free entry, that's $35 less, probably something you would really like. Absolutely. And in this case, who ends up getting free entry in this? Like who, which players end up getting that particular little bonus to their just, Travelanza experience? Just first place. Just first place, so it's it's the winner take all at this point. They're gonna be fighting as hard as they possibly can, but that's that's definitely a bonus for EJK. However, not completely uh, unwanted by Steadfast, our uh, Zerg play that we just saw, and that and uh, past that we still have a losers bracket um, or a lower bracket that's going on as well. So lots of games still coming up. Um, what else do we have to look at? Like what else? Um, we have to look forward to at this point, though. Like, are there any like part? Like, is there any history between EJK and Steadfast, or not really? I don't think these two have ever actually played in a Canadian LAN or Canadian online tournament before. They were both at ETS, but I don't think they were on the same side of the bracket or same group. But so this will be their first time meeting, as far as I'm aware, and it'll be quite a treat. These two they have. They're very skilled, and uh, we'll have to see how well they fare once we come back from a quick three-minute break. We've got some more StarCraft headed your way. <laughs> 